Hi, this is Kieran. Today let's talk about MEV. What is MEV? MEV stood for minor extractable value on Ethereum 1 and on Ethereum 2 we refer to MEV as maximum extractable value as there are no more miners. However, both of these are the same thing. They're sometimes called validator extractable value on ETH 2.0. It doesn't really matter what you call it. MEV is a measure, measure representing the total value that can be extracted permissionlessly from the reordering inclusion or censoring of transactions. It's basically how much ETH a special miner account or a special validator account can extract given a set of user transactions with an initial state and a set of contracts by inserting own transactions censoring from the user transactions and then reordering them. In other words, it refers to profits that can be made by extracting value from Ethereum users by reordering, inserting, or censoring transactions with blocks being produced. Miners on Ethereum 1.0 profited from the MEV in really two ways. Uh, selling, number one, selling scarce block space to non-miner MEV extractors through priority gas auctions in exchange for exorbitant transaction fees. What is a priority gas auction, you might ask? Well, as, pr uh, as pure arbitrage opportunities offer unconditional revenue, bots often competed against each other by bidding up the transaction fees, or gas, in the PGAs, uh, priority gas auctions, which further drives up fees for other users. And number two is via reordering, including, or censoring transactions to profit from on-chain liquidation or arbitrage arbitrage opportunities for themselves. MEVs are powerful because it shows how reordering transactions can give rise for front running and sandwich attacks. There are also other attacks possible with the use of MEVs though, such as DEX arbitrage. Uh, this is basically if two DEXs are offering a token at two different prices, someone can buy the token on the lower price DEX and then sell it on the higher price DEX. This creates an arbitrage opportunity. Front running is another one. Searchers basically use customized front-running bots to monitor the network for large orders on DEXs and submit competing transactions with higher gas fees to be mined before the pending transaction. Number three is sandwich attacks. Sandwich attack follows a spe specific course. It basically detects the victim transaction, front-run the victim's transaction, then victim transacts and suffers higher slippage, and then finally the attacker then back runs the victim. That's how a sandwich attack is done. There are also other types of attacks such as back running, liquidations, time bandit attacks, the uncle bandit attacks and so on and so forth. MEV cannot be removed 100% but they can be minimized. So how do we actually do that as users? Some of the ways to mitigate front running are to basically avoid low liquidity pools what that means is low liquidity pools are a front runner's dream because there's less chance of competition among other front runners. So you should avoid them to minimize the odds of being targeted. Second way you can minimize is by setting low slippage. Most DEXs, decentralized exchanges, allow users to set a maximum slippage tolerance. So you should keep this value very low, somewhere around 0.5 to 2% to avoid front runners. The larger your order, the lower you will want to keep your slippage. Number three is you can overpay on gas. Slow transactions give the front runners more time to formulate an order to siphon the value from your trade. So by underpaying on gas, odds are your transaction will be queued for a longer period of time, giving front runners more time to work. Consider overpaying on gas to improve the priority of the transaction in the form of fast gas option on your wallet like MetaMask. Number four is you can place a smaller order. Front runners usually need to risk a lot to win, very, very little. So keeping your order to a smaller amount means you're less likely to be targeted by front runners. That doesn't result in much profit for them in the first place. Other ways to really mitigate MEV, the attacks that are possible with MEVs are commit and reveal strategy, off-chain ordering, oracle ordering of the transactions, determining the minimal expected value, Getting back to the original topic of the video, does MEV exist on Ethereum 2.0, whereby there are no miners at all to begin with? Well, since the transaction ordering process in ETH2 is the same as that of uh, Proof of Work Ethereum, which is ETH1, it is reasonable to think that MEV opportunities will still exist as we know them today. 
Well, to put it simply, the expected profit for a validator is determined by two factors. Number one is MEV availability. Does the network expose significant MEV at the time the validator is a proposer? And the number two is MEV expertise itself. Does the validator have the expertise to extract the MEV? So MEV is still possible on ETH 2.0. However, it depends on the amount of Ethereum staked by the validator and if the validator has knowledge and infrastructure to extract the MEV. While most validators may not have this capability, it is still possible. One alternative is to use external builders, which can propose a block with a significantly larger profit to the validator. As such, MEV won't really go away. MEV is like crypto's version of Wall Street front running. And as such, all the previous front running attacks such as sandwich attacks and liquidation are still possible on ETH 2.0. MEV works nearly the same as it does on uh, on ETH 1.0, although you may need to be more knowledgeable and have enough firepower to pull it off. So you should still strive to develop your smart contracts as securely as possible.